Hello, my name is Sean, and this is The Limit, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Alfa Romeo Julia GTAM. Now, before we get to the episode, I'm going to talk about today's sponsor, which is me. I have a second YouTube channel where I draw and do other artistic things, and I decided to finally plug it in on this channel. So, if you want to check it out, links will be in the description and any support i get will be welcome now let's get to what you came in for the julia gtam is alfa romeo's limited production track focused car and it's very limited this car will only have 500 produced around the world with most of the allocations being in europe the GTAM isn't just a style upgrade from the Julia Quattrofolio. This car also has 35 more horsepower, lost 200 pounds, and that is mostly due to the rear seat delete, which also includes a roll cage and racing harness. And I know what you're thinking, uh, aren't you gonna uh, talk about the new rear wing? and the wheel arches and the front splitter and rear diffuser uh, yeah i'm gonna talk about those things the rear wing isn't as massive as some people are saying i've seen bigger crazier wings on smaller cars the front diffuser is nothing different from any other italian uh, automaker that rear diffuser is actually bigger than I think this car needs but it isn't so aggressive that it scrapes the ground and has no clearance at all this is still a sedan and I actually do love the black wheel arches on this car I hear it's also whiter than the base Julia Quattrofolio I don't know because I've never seen one in person so I'm just gonna assume that it is but not by very much and for the people that like swag, I don't know if they still call it that, this car also comes with a racing helmet, track suit, racing shoes, and a few other things. So if you like stuff like that, that comes included with the car. And now I'm gonna give a few of my thoughts about this car as it stands today. Now, as some of you may know, past GTA and GTA M's have been two-door coupes, while this is a four-door sedan. I don't think that tarnishes the name, because if you see some of the cars that have the name on them, that name was tarnished about 20 years ago. And this might do something to fix that. It's a recognizable name, so it's not like, you know, they can just invent something else to sell more cars. This one will likely sell cars, and that's what they care about. Here's a thought on them making a super sedan based on a car that doesn't have the best reliability records. Now, I can't speak to the reliability of the Julia because I've never driven one and never owned one. I can only relate to what the big automotive journalists have said, and they're saying it's not reliable. So, who am I to say that it is? Hopefully, Alfa Romeo has addressed some of those issues, and this car is not going to have them. Now, you're probably thinking, why not make a specialized version of the 4C and I actually think they've already done that and the 4C is kind of getting up there in age so it doesn't really make no sense to make any specialized versions of that now let's talk about what the possible pricing could be now some people have suggested this is likely a Jaguar Project 8 fighter they're probably going to take it to the Nürburgring and try to get that track record for sedans that they lost to the project eight years ago so uh, with that said the quattrofolio is around eighty thousand dollars so this car if it is a project eight fighter is gonna be around that two hundred thousand dollar price range so a hundred and fifty thousand to two hundred thousand dollars is what i got floating around in my head now i'm not in the boardroom and i'm not 
uh, you know, talking to people, Alfa Romeo. So I really don't know what they plan on charging for this car, but it is limited production, as I said before. So the price is going to be pretty significant because this is a significant car. So in closing, I would like to say that I've always loved the design of the Giulio Quattrofoglio. I think it's one of the best looking sedans on the planet now i've heard some of the complaints about it uh, interior styling is cheap or whatever but with this car you can alcatara and carbon fiber it up hopefully those will be options and you know the, the interior design doesn't mean as much because this is supposed to be a track focused car now do i see myself paying 150 to 200 thousand dollars for this car no i'm poor <laughs> if i'm gonna pay that much money for a car it's gonna have to be something i know that's reliable so i'm in a, i'm gonna be in that porsche range and that mercedes amg gt range but if i was a collector and i wanted a car that i knew was going to be a future collectible this would be the one but if reliability is still going to be an issue, then it's probably going to be the one I skip. But if everything is good to go and it's, you know, I don't use it every day, I think you can get away with owning it for a fun weekend type car. So with that said, I would like to bring this video to an end because I'm sweating like a pig and I'm burning up. <laughs> so if you like the video, like the video. If you dislike the video, dislike the video if you want to see what i got planned next come see what i got planned next i got a lot of store for this channel really want you guys to be there with me and with that said i'll catch you later